So if you know me or see my content for a substantial amount of time, you'd know I'm a fan of the series Persona. I got into it by myself more or less since 5's release and have been enjoying it since, especially with 3 and 4. And also got word before its release that P5 the Animation was in the works by A1 Pictures. Now, I actually enjoyed most of their adaptations. Promise Neverland, at least for the first season, Moggy, Seven Deadly Sins, again for the first season at least, Ohana, and Your Lion April. So, I was fairly excited for how it turned out, but after watching the first three episodes initially, I... bailed. As a fan, it just aggravated me how lackluster the animation and art was while watching it. Then in 2020, P5A finally came out with a dub, and I decided to watch it through in English because of that. As you can probably guess, more problems arose as I continued on. But alright, you most likely already know this. A number of anti-tubers have most likely covered this series and talked about its problems and where it fails. So, I'm not gonna sit here and regurgitate the same stuff about how the story is rushed, the animation is off a number of times, yada 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 yada. I'll be honest, while this show isn't the worst animated series I've seen, I think that trophy has left this skelter heaven, and I don't consider it horrible or terrible, it's just... disappointing. Especially when the people behind it have done better work too. But then I thought, why exactly was this a disappointment? Both Persona 3 and 4 have adaptations, and I thought they turned out alright, so why was this disappointing to me? So today, instead of bashing and ragging on it, I want to take a step back as a fan and look at this as an artist. But because I know little to nothing about the whole process of being an animator in Japan, or working with a studio or in the animation industry, my takes in this video are mostly going to be educated guesses. But, just maybe, there might be something of truth to what I'm saying. Now, for context, this is a script I wrote in the spring of 2021, long before now. And in between then and now, I managed to buy and catch up to the manga that, as of both writing and recording this, left off as it started in the Fourth Palace, better known as Futaba Story. Initially, I was going to compare why Persona 5 doesn't work as an adaptation due to time and energy that the people behind A1 Pictures may not have had, but now, I feel like that's not exactly the case. A factor, but not quite. I believe that this specific adaptation doesn't work, not entirely because of time and energy, but more of what this adaptation chooses to adapt from the game. That being, it not only tries to incorporate everything the game does, but also summarize it in a two-core series, or 24 to 25 episodes, with a couple movie-long specials. I strayed away from looking at the mug until this year because of this anime, because I was in the mindset that adapting this game in any way that can feel both like an enjoyable experience while also being able to incorporate the various gameplay elements in an ideal way, was impossible for this game specifically. But then I remembered I also took a look at the P5 special, The Daybreakers, which is one of the most beautifully animated OVAs I've ever had the pleasure of seeing. While the story is significantly less than a P5 palace run, the animation, the retelling of said story, and inclusion of new additions to an actual side quest in the game were all well done. And I kept scratching my head back and forth as to wondering why we couldn't get something like this for the anime. It was sometime after this that I binged the manga, and honestly, I know it's still being worked on, but ultimately it makes me wish the anime went more down this route of retelling the story of Persona 5. It removes various elements and aspects of the game that, in a medium where your sole purpose is to read and enjoy the story and not play it, would ultimately feel unnecessary and even feel like filler. In the game, it makes sense, since you're playing through it and you also gotta level up a bit before the boss fight, but here, the story of Persona 5 in the manga feels a hell of a lot quicker because the people working on it knew what to incorporate, what to change, what to rearrange, what to add, and what to keep out. For example, let's take the Kamoshida Palace, the first palace in the game. In the anime, it's pretty much B for B repeating what happens in the game in significantly shorter time, and that includes a number of events and moments that feel better off in the game as opposed to being in an adaptation. There are certain additions that A1 added, but ultimately they kinda can be chalked up to being filler or just, again, putting too much into a game adaptation that already has too much to begin with. And throughout the entirety of the anime adaptation, a lot of the dialogue is played without the characters actually on screen. Basically, A1 took the everyone knows the game by now, let's just blast through it all approach. In the manga, the time spent in the palace is significantly shorter. Hell, they find where the treasure is before An is even a member yet. Pretty much, a lot of the events in the game are not shown in the manga, so then the question becomes, what do you put in place of it? 
Well, the manga decides to shed more light on the characters and add-on development. Take two pages from Chapter 5 out of the manga, which focuses on the protagonist, Akira Kurusu, and his first day at Chujin Academy. Let's remove the text for a minute and talk about what the manga shows visually. The first three panels show how Akira is being avoided, leading to a panel of his face. The anxious look he has and darkened eyes as he realizes how hopeless his situation is, the light shifted behind him, showing mainly him shrouded in shadows. Without even the context, the way this manga is framed shows more of a character in a sort of despair, and even makes you feel while reading it like your heart is sinking. The last three panels on the next page has Ryuji talking to him, with the last panel showing his face. Enveloped in light, a warmer expression, a contrast to how he was a minute ago. His situation might seem hopeless, but this moment reassures him that he's not alone in this. Comparing these two shots of the main character's face together, there's a major difference, and it all takes place within literally two pages. Now to add back in the text, it shows the main character, Akira Kurusu, trying to deal with falsifying a lot of the rumors around him and having other people understand what kind of person he actually is, with many people avoiding him and talking behind his back. The second page has Ryuji coming into his classroom looking for him, and out in the hallway actually sympathizing with him and assuring Akira that he doesn't believe any of the rumors. What I like about this is that both of these characters are considered outcasts and shunned by the school body, and while their situation at this point in time seems hopeless, both of them being in the same boat essentially brings more of a silver lining to it all. The anime tries to capture everything that was in the game, and as a result, the people behind the show spent way too much time replicating everything from the game. But if we had the anime go in a similar way as the manga, neglecting most of the game-specific content and focusing more on the story and characters, we'd probably have not just a better told adaptation, but a better animated one as well. To the people who played Persona 5, you remember this guy? He's the first Mementos request, and would eventually come to the Phantom Thieves to ask them to change the heart of the artist known as Madarame. The game makes him out to be someone who used to study under him in Yusuke, hated it, eventually got screwed over, and stalked his ex-girlfriend. In the manga? Well, if they don't outright say it, they allude to him and Yusuke being like siblings while studying under Madarame. This is what I'm talking about. It keeps true to the story many of us have come to know and builds onto it if need be, or rearrange the order of events to better flow with this adaptation's retelling, or even change up how certain parts were worded or go down. This is an adaptation that's different in various regards to the game, but those differences I think honestly work for it. P5 the manga proved me wrong that this game is capable of being adapted, and on top of that, not exactly being like the game, but still faithful in investing which made me look at the anime more in disappointment and hope as opposed to disappointment and anger before. And it's not to say that the anime was completely hopeless through and through. When looking through it due to the English dub coming out, I actually found out that a part of the game that many fans consider to be infamous out of P5 was changed up in the anime, and the changes I think are better by a wide margin compared to what the game did. This of course, I'm talking about the Morgana Ryuji fight after the Hawaii trip. In the game, Morgana attacks and calls out Ryuji, mainly because of what he said before being taken to heart. They get into a fight, leading to another character becoming involved. Afterwards, Ryuji acts like a conceited prick instead of apologizing how he acted towards him, never actually learns anything, and soon after it's all over. In the anime, however, this is painted less of a weird writing choice and more of two friends that blow up at each other and legitimately apologizing for how they acted soon after. Ryuji in this is shown to be an idiot, but a well-meaning idiot. His apology comes off as improvised, but it also feels genuine, and when he tries again, it again feels genuine. Also him running up the stairs with the medkit because he was worried about Morgana is a nice touch. And also, side note, the animation in this episode is actually on par with P4's anime, and I honestly was kind of wanting that for the majority. So in terms of why the anime couldn't have done this game's story different more, maybe it was something behind the scenes that just couldn't have made it possible. Maybe A1 did have changes they wanted to go with, but Atlas rejected a number of them. Or maybe the ones calling the shots with the adaptation thought squeezing in almost everything from the game was the route to go. Regardless of the reason, what's done is done, so there's not much we can do other than criticize and discuss how it could be improved. So, why exactly am I talking about this? Why exactly am I bringing up a series that's said and done? Well, because this may hypothetically happen again. We have Persona 5 Royal, and by extension, Persona 5 Scramble the Phantom Strikers is out already. 
and there's a possibility that they'll get their own anime adaptations. Of course, that also means that what A1 did with P5's adaptation may, again, hypothetically happen again. With Royal, I do hope that if it does happen, whoever's put in charge of it decides to go more of the route of what the manga is doing, and before you ask, the manga is adapting Royal's story as well now, but let's say that for the argument's sake that the people responsible for this adaptation has to stick to the game and nothing else. In that case, I think it'd be nice to see this hypothetical adaptation only do part one of the story for the adaptation, which is the whole story around Kamoshida's arc. Honestly, think about it for a sec. These game adaptations are supposed to be promotional content for the games anyway, so why not just adapt a good portion of the game's story enough for a season of an anime, but also good enough to make things feel complete, yet open-ended enough for the story? You'd have more time put into the adaptation as a whole, making it look and told fairly decent at the very least, then depending on how it's handled, you have newcomers who've never played Persona or Persona 5 for that matter to get interested in the games, and if people, especially the fans, like how it's handled, it hopefully gives reason for the animation studio responsible to continue adapting the story of the game. If the adaptation isn't handled well, similar to how I was with the manga, there's a very likely possibility of newcomers to the series avoiding the game because of it. So after all this, after everything I said, do I think that Atlas or even A1 Pictures are going to see this video and immediately take my words to heart and then side, oh yeah, we'll do exactly what you say? Probably not. They're probably not going to because I'm just a nobody on the internet. Truth be told, I don't really know in the end, but in terms of an adaptation like this, I think it's important to take a look at where we fail and learn from it going forward. Otherwise, we're just kind of pointing fingers at a problem until it gets fixed. I don't know if what I'm saying about P5 the animation holds any water really, but I think it doesn't work. But considering the different possibilities you could do to adapt a game like this faithfully and keep it entertaining, if done again, the question becomes, but can it work?